Hi. Hello. It's so nice to have you here. I I'm so thrilled to do this. Yeah. Really. Yes. It's, it's really it really makes me happy uh, that that you were so excited about it. I uh, you know we've known what we when did we meet? I don't even know. I think it was at a new music gathering or. Yeah, I feel like a new music gathering or a Midwest, also both. Maybe I both. mean, kind of like within months of each other. So were you at the Bowling Green? I was at the Bowling Green. Okay, so probably there. Okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to guess. Like, it's, uh, isn't it interesting how friendships work? It's like, you can't really pinpoint. Yeah, I have no idea. But anyway, yeah, so I was excited to have you on the show. And, uh, and when you said that you wanted to make a, uh, this Korean dish I was like yes let's make that happen so what are we making today so um what we're making um we'll call it Korean scallion pancake it's called hajan and I'm probably not pronouncing it correctly I called my mother and I was like mom I made hajan she's like what I was like <laughs> hajan and she's like well, I said Korean pancake. Now, the thing is, pancake has a connotation of being sweet, right? It's like something you have for breakfast. And these aren't sweet pancakes. These are savory, so you can have them whenever. Also, like, if you don't want to have sweet pancakes whenever, it's America. Who cares? So um, she's like, what? Korean doesn't have pancake. I'm like, yes, you do. It's like, okay, but you don't think of it as a pancake. It's like, and she's like, is it this? And she had the seafood name, so she says something. something. Um, because I don't know what that name is. And I'm like, no, it's not the seafood pancake because they have that too. And she's like, ah, oh, the kimchi. And I'm like, I love that. And I've been sometimes putting kimchi in it. I was like, no, pajang with green onion. She's like, oh, pajang. So um, really aspirate your P. Pajang. Pajang. And um, if you see it spelled out in English, they put an N at the end, but you actually don't voice the end. Like all Korean consonants at the end, it's like you shape your like tongue. No, you actually, so it's so, and you use the tongue, so it's like an alveolar stop, um, an alveolar stop, so you don't, you don't uh, voice the end, it's pajang, so you just stop it, so um, I, I probably I ruined it, yeah, yeah but, I probably but, ruined it, so um, you could say Korean scallion pancake, I'm gonna call it pajang, and uh, my mom will be like, no, Pajang. I'm like, okay, whatever, Min <laughs> I'm just done. <laughs> I try. I so, try. You know, this reminds me. We, I, uh, this reminds me of my father, who can't even say the word jalapeno. Um, like yeah. he said, like he, well, he, and he can't do the enye, like the the. That's, that's hard. The, yeah. Mm -hmm. the, the nyo. Um, and so his is jalapeno. Um, Jesus. And, and, Plus, he, this is, and he's more Hispanic than I am, right? right. Um, uh -huh. But my grandfather and my grandmother can both say it just fine. So it's just a matter of he didn't, he was not raised speaking Spanish. And I took two years of high school Spanish uh, and just lived in a different America than he did. Um, right. And I will have to say that um, I used to get really mad at my mom for not teaching me Korean because in a way it's kind of robbed me of my identity because like, I might pass around Asian people, but I generally pass as white. And uh, like the first thing people will be like, you're half Korean, can you speak Korean? And I'm like, I can say eight different forms of hello or something. It's not really that much, but it's a lot. Um, and some food words, obviously not this one, um, but uh, there's just no proof of it, you know? Um, but like, I asked my mom, I'm like, why didn't you teach me Korean? And she's like, oh, I wanted to learn English. And she's like, I don't want to be that Korean, which is like an odd thing to say, but like, I realized it's like the one thing my mom did for herself, which was like, she really assimilated herself and she wanted her kids to assimilate. So um, that being said, I'm trying to learn Korean right now. It's a slow process, but you know what? If I can like read things, I think that's winning. <laughs> so. Yeah, um, why don't we start cooking? Um, Excellent. Yes, let's so, do it. Um, this is a really simple recipe. Uh, I also chose it because I think anybody has all the ingredients at home, except maybe a couple of ingredients, which you can substitute. But um, yeah, I guess like I just dump it in. I have like my measuring cups nearby, I think. This yeah, is my I, uh, um, I laid out everything in place because being on a cooking show, I... Dude, those are fancy. Like I, they, were, they were so inexpensive too. They were like, it was $15 for 10 of them, right? Huh. And Twelve of them, which maybe is pricey, but like, you know what? Actually, that's not. You should just send me the link later. Yeah, I, send okay. the link. I I love it. It, it because it just allows me to pre-measure everything 
and then I don't have to worry about measuring or anything. Um, okay, so we have two different techniques. So we're putting in a half cup of all-purpose flour. Done. Um, the second is a half cup of potato starch. Now, for all of you people at home, do you have to use potato starch? No, you can use corn starch. This is corn starch. And in fact, the first time I made these, I put in corn starch. This is a legit thing. If you want to find potato starch, make sure it's potato starch and not potato flour. Very different. Um, I would say the only textural difference is um, potato starch might be a little bit creamier, but that's actually according to my spouse and not me. Maybe that's because I'm half white and I can't tell. Who knows? <laughs> One teaspoon of red pepper flakes. I happen to have this expired pepper from when I lived in Columbus, Ohio, and there was a legit uh, cream store named Ariang, but red pepper yeah. uh, is a staple. All right, you're ahead of me. One teaspoon. I gotta like read things. <laughs> One teaspoon of kosher salt. Salt. Um, if you're using regular salt, there's some kind of like ratio to not use as much. And we are gonna whisk that together. And it, and I have to say like the pepper gives it a little bit of color. I like color. Um, and then we add the water. So one cup of ice water. Oh, so I had a question about this because I've never used ice water in a thing. Um, so I have, ice and water, right? Okay. Like, take the ice out and then just pour the water in. Well, I guess you don't want chunks. Um, so, okay. So when you made the pancakes, admittedly, when I saw your picture, I was like, damn, like I'm doing something wrong. Like yours looked really pretty. So I poured um, this in there, like with the ice in it, right? And then that kept everything cold while I was mixing it and the ice melted. But I also, I don't know if I had this much ice in there that time. Well, let's try it. I'm just. I Why don't it away? Yeah, exactly. So mine's like mostly melted, but it has the condensation on the top. Um, we not use the ice, and I'll put like two or three ice cubes in there. Gosh, now I'm tempted because now I'm like, is my water cold enough? Um, for those of you guys at home, it's supposed to like pop up. It's like science. Um, that being said, when I was talking to my mom about the pronunciation, I was like, yeah, you know, like I bought the uh, potato starch for this and I like, I put in kimchi, you know, it's basically, you can put in whatever vegetable you have. Right. As long as it's not too, it's a, it's a pancake. Like you really can't go wrong it's like with it. Grapes. You can put anything you want on it. Exactly. So I was telling her, she's like, what's wrong? She's like, oh, uh, you're making it too complicated. I was like, yeah, I put in an egg. She's like, why? I'm like, that's what a recipe called for now. I didn't cook Korean food for the longest time because like my mom would be like, watch me. And she do, I'm like, mom, I'm half white. Like, give me some measurements. She's like, watch me. Like in the, the angry Korean mom way. So uh, she's saying, she's like, it's just, she's like, it's just potato starch and water. And then she doesn't put the veggies in. Like what we're gonna do today is put the veggies into our batter and then cook it. She just like cooks it on one side. Uh, no, and while it's cooking on the one side, then she painstakingly puts the pot, so like the, the green onion. Oh yeah. Oh, on yeah. top, on top. Yeah, and then she flips it over because she's like, there's no leavening. So um, she's like, she didn't want to like smush her pancake. Yeah. Now hers are delicious. So I'm not gonna like question yeah, her sure. technique whatsoever. I just gotta watch her. But again, I'm half white and I'm afraid. So I'm just yeah. using <laughs> Are chopsticks part of Korean culture? Uh, yes. Actually, uh, my mom taught me how to hold a pencil in a specific way. So like chopsticks. Oh, you're going to beat it that way. I... Just because I'm using the small bowl and it's actually, ah. it's actually easier to beat with chopsticks than it is to, to beat with uh, a whisk just because of the size of my bowl. Okay, I'm using a fork. Like, I feel like... A fork would probably be fine too. Yeah. Well, I was just like, of course, I've seen my mom do that. She always like, I don't know. I think she also tries to one up me in the kitchen too. So it's like. I, I learned this from the fried rice episode actually. Uh, Ooh. Because we had to do the same thing. Um, and they were using chopsticks and um, I thought that was pretty great. Um, I need a scraper, okay. But I also, you know, I are admittedly, like I, I, know, I know a lot of Korean people, but uh -huh. I feel like I actually am not as aware as I'd like to be about Korean culture. Um, because most of the people that I know who are Korean 
are actually very similar to you where they had like this almost dissociated relationship with with the culture um and i and i like understand that for my own same reasons of having a dissociated relationship with my own culture i I'm, i'm probably closer to jewish culture in that sense, just because I was raised in a much more Jewish household, even though I wouldn't consider myself all that religious. But, Mm -hmm. um, but anyways. um, This reminds me, actually, quickly, I had a conversation with uh, Ricardo Mm Zomaldun, who is, uh, uh, he's Mexican, he's a Mexican composer, he teaches at Eastman, but his dad uh, is Jewish, like atheist Jew. And like, I was actually talking to him about like immigrant like culture because he's an immigrant he has sons that like you know um were raised here in, in the states and he pointed out something to me where it's like uh jews are like the constant immigrants they've always had to they've like migrate yeah. and it's the same it's that mentality and like koreans are from a very tiny 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 peninsula which is constantly invaded another show um and but what we're everywhere they're koreans everywhere so we've just had to kind of assimilate in a similar way and we also have this kind of pride about it too, uh, which I was talking with like a Korean conductor where it's like, you know, even even if it's like the, the World Cup, the Men's World Cup, and like they, they won so that Mexico could go on. There was just like, yes, even though they were out. <laughs> we were just like, go Korea, like no matter what, all the time. Um, all right, so we put in our beaten egg, okay. one beaten egg, and now we're gonna make the sauce, which I need to do real fast. And I'm gonna put this in the sink here, I think. You know, it's it's a beautiful orangey color. Um, all right, so, oh, we need like a whole quarter cup of soy sauce. All right, so soy sauce, which like, I'm running through my bottle, so it's like I have a tiny, like a, I'm gonna like double fist this in a way. Um, and it doesn't matter what soy sauce you use, I think, um, because um, I just recently learned that uh, Japanese soy sauce has more of like a sake flavor. And uh, this is Chinese soy sauce, not as much, but it does not matter. It is delicious. So I'm using up this bottle. I'm just gonna put a little bit because I made way too much last time. But anyways, uh, by the way, for those who are following along, I'm putting in three tablespoons of unseasoned rice vinegar. And it is mostly correct. Um, yeah, so my dad, so I know how to pronounce kimchi. I know how to pronounce bulgogi because it's meat. Actually, it means fire meat. I recently learned this. Um, galbi, which is like Korean barbecue, delicious. And uh, gimpa, which is like Korean rolled. It's not sushi. Just be very uh, particular. Mm-hmm. All right, next we have sesame oil, which, um, see, if we're going to talk about experimenting, this is like my favorite, and I have a backup bottle. Sesame oil? I love sesame oil. It is like, for me, I can't have too much. I also made the mistake a very long time ago of thinking I could, like, cook with it. No. <laughs> it makes everything very sticky. It's called oopsies. I want to, you know what, you know, I'm going to use more the hell with it. I could always put in more acid later, but you know, I'm going to finish up this bottle. Go Here, I'm experimenting. And that's why it's called Creatives in the Kitchen, because it's all about being creative in the kitchen with your food choices, trying things that you maybe have never tried before. And then I think it's important to taste what you, when you're experimenting. Absolutely. All right. Fourth teaspoon of pepper and... Yeah, and I think what I love about cooking, it's like, even even the mere like chopping or doing something, it, like I think of like creative things or like things that I'm stuck about, stuck on. So like for me, it's like, if I chop things, I think of something compositionally or if I'm washing my hair, which is a little bit inconvenient. So quarter cup of carrots, they say it's about half a carrot, but I went a little bit overboard and I don't want to have like leftover carrot shreds, so. And it goes. Um, there are times where I'm too lazy to shred carrots and I happen to have some kimchi in the fridge. So I just throw in some kimchi and I blot it because you don't want it too runny. Um, you could also put in like tiny shrimps. Like I would say experiment. Yeah, like I think any veggie really could go. I, it wouldn't technically be called pajang because pa is the word for green onion, but who cares? All right, and green onions, right? Yeah, green onions, lots of them. I love green onions. 
In fact, uh, for a while due to COVID, I couldn't make this because there were just no green onions. I couldn't find garlic for the longest time. And I oh, love torture. Yeah, I, I, I basically always have at least a head of garlic, you know, available to me. And Correct. And not have that for, um, for maybe like two or three weeks is the worst. Tell me first a little bit about just yourself and your music and, and like where are you coming from? Yeah, I, um, so I, I realized a long time ago, I had a um, kind of like a composer symposium with Professor Joel Hoffman, who is now Professor Emeritus at uh, the Cincinnati College Conservatory of Music. And he had this exercise where he asked everybody, uh, why do you compose and who do you write for? Um, and through this exercise, which I actually do with kind of all my students, definitely like the younger ones, because I think it doesn't hurt to start thinking about audience, but um, I realize that the way I exist is through composing, is through expressing myself. And so um, I remember when I was really young, um, I thought, oh, I gotta be avant-garde, or I gotta try new things. And I realized that, you know, if your music wants to survive over time, you just need to write something that's true to you. Now, does that guarantee success? Does that mean my music will last forever? Who knows? I really don't know. But at the same time, like, I feel like what brings me most joy in creating music is stuff that I think about or things I want to express. It's like the best way I express myself. Um, granted, it's in a very abstract way. So um, some of my topics could be um, labeled as political. Some of them could be about cats because that's my life. Um, or like just things I'm thinking about. Um, composing during the pandemic and being in isolation, um, I'll admit to everybody, and I don't think I've been hiding this, um, when the pandemic first hit, um, Christ almighty, I think I just wanted to sleep all day. Like there was just no incentive uh, because you have this invisible threat. Um, you, I also was worried that, um, you know, um, administrators, governments were not taking this as seriously as I would have liked. I'd read about this. It's a terrible, terrible virus. Um, and we have no cure for it. So this is like something that no one, I think, alive or still alive has ever experienced in their lifetime. We've never had this much like death or destruction in a very long time. Um, and so um, I'm actually diagnosed with generalized anxiety. Um, I kind of shut down a little bit, but you know, that was okay. Um, because like we all have this like hierarchy of needs. And the good news is that I had a, um, I was, I'm still working with a therapist, found a online therapist. So that was convenient. Um, but like she, she was like, composing is a privilege right now. Like you have needs, you don't feel safe. Your number one needs are like warmth, you know, sleeping. Um, eating, right? So I think we're all putting on our pandemic pounds, but who cares? It's like the best way we cope. And so um, I also had to like try teaching my classes, which were all composition lessons. And so I kind of told my students, I'm like, look, um, this is your time. You do whatever you want. If you write something, that's great. Because I think there's some composers that like needed to write and needed to be busy and to kind of like get over this grief and I know this is not like a tangible grief because like no one's died or maybe you had somebody who died. Um, but like the grief of being going, able to go outside, the grief of, of not being able to go out and like to get a drink, to hang out at a bar, to like go hang out at a coffee shop. You know, like we, we didn't have our classes. Like this is a grieving process. And so um, the first month I didn't write anything. Um, I thankfully didn't feel so bad at the same time I had some really awful anxiety dreams that I thought I was slacking. So um, as of now, I feel way better. Um, I feel like I have some kind of a schedule. I'm like back to putting on eyeliner daily. They used to not be a thing. Like, but I think that's a small win where it's like I'm finding some semblance of normalcy. Um, at the same time, I'm still aware that you know, we're still going through this. I'm still seeing my therapist. I'm still taking my meds. Um, I, I have like, I feel excited to write music now. All right, we're gonna put in two tablespoons of grapeseed or other oil. I'm just gonna wing it. Cause it's a pancake. And everybody at home, the first pancake might be bad. That's just the thing with pancakes. My first pancake is always bad. If you don't know that, you know, you, you maybe have never cooked a pancake before. I mean, 
confession, I don't know if this is going to, I'm not great at cooking pancakes, but they still taste delicious. Right. It doesn't have to be look pretty. Absolutely. So I'm going to actually cheat. I know the recipe says to like put in a whole cup. I just put in a half cup because then I can like eye it. Here we go. Party. Oh, we spread it out, right? Yeah. I think when I make these, I keep forgetting to spread it out. Oh, and then we're supposed to like reduce the temperature, correct? Is that a thing? No, wait. Do, do, do. No, I lied. It's a cast iron. All right. My pan was not quite hot enough, but that's okay. The first pancake is a duck. The first pancake, it's like, can we make it so that it doesn't exist except in our bellies? Right. Do you know what I mean? Like, oh, we were supposed to time this, like about four minutes, right? Something like that. Okay. I mean, I think it's good to keep an I eye on. I actually don't think I, I, I don't think I timed it. I think I, I just eyeballed it. Yeah, um, you poked it around. Like, if, you know, there's a way that pancake looks. Um, I agree. Like, I'm having an awesome time. Yeah. And, knock on wood, this is not sticking to my cast iron. So I probably put in enough oil. And I think I'm ready to flip. You it's go ahead. Good. I'm not, because my pan was not quite hot enough yet. Um, but yeah. that's... That's, That's how I flip things. Yay me. Um, okay. I'm actually proud of my, maybe it's because this is like my third time's a charm. Yeah. It's actually turning out okay. Although it looks, I actually think this pancake looks better than the last one that I made. The first one that I made, rather. Maybe we're just gonna, maybe it takes practice. Yeah, maybe, you know, that is the moral of this, of this show, is that everything takes practice. Everything you know, nobody gets it right the first time. And if you do, you got lucky. Right? Yeah, I'd agree or with that. Or you have cooking experience that you have, en you have enough experience just like in the kitchen that you're like, you're you, when you're trying a new recipe, you're like, well, I know the general principles of how this works. And so yes. me trying something new is more of, uh, it's just experimenting. Um, exactly. So, so while, while the pancakes are cooking, um, yeah. let's Wait. talk, uh, so yeah, you, you were talking about your music, you were talking about creating yeah. isolation, um, I want to know about, um, the, you know, specific projects that you're working on right now. Yes, actually, so speaking of isolation, I was actually, um, in the middle, or supposed to be starting to write, by starting, I mean, in my plan, my master plan, a piece for, uh, Michigan State University's wind ensemble, so, um, I wasn't quite sure what I would do. So speaking of isolation, so I um, I was rec I recently finished a piece for um, three trouble singers um, who happen to be women uh, about um, they took quotes from lady astronauts for lack of a better word and they asked women composers to write like set their text and I finished this piece it was supposed to premiere in New York City this month. Mm, it'll it'll happen later. It'll just happen later. Um, and so I had space things on my mind. Um, and then what I decided to do was write about um, Mars. Actually, NASA has some public domain sounds from Mars that they've sampled. Um, and I think I'm going to use them. And I think this is actually good timing because um, there was a New York Times article by astronaut Scott Kelly called um, I'm an astronaut, so I know what it's like to live in isolation. And I'm like, that is actually perfect uh, because, uh, yeah, I'm feeling isolated. I also live in a small town in Texas. Well, it's not small. It's small for Texas. Okay, that's the brown. I have actually been there. I know. It's like, if you ever come back, I'll tell you what's up. I'll tell you, like, I'll show you some places to go to uh, that's not like all Buddy Holly all the time. Although I like Buddy Holly. Right. Uh, well, I'm going to start the next one now that my pan's actually the right heat. Yep. Uh, oh, maybe I should... Okay, mine, so I didn't put my, <laughs> I didn't bump my heat right back up. Oops, so it's, it's taken a while to brown. <laughs> so maybe I should brown the other side. We'll see, maybe my second one's gonna be my first one. Oh, you know what I forgot to do is yeah. reduce, reduce the heat. Huh? I forgot to reduce the heat. You know what? I say, if y'all have a good technique of cooking a pancake, just go with that. You're cooking pancakes. That's what you're doing. Put the rest of it in the pan. See, this is looking more like the one that I made the first time. Yours is beautiful. Like, okay. 
Mine, like now that I'm pouring them in because I'm not using a whole cup, they kind of look like a Rorschach chest, like it's lost it's itself, like, I but I kind of like it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, I will also say that I'm working on, I'm with like a coalition of composers where we're trying to like figure out how to address what's going to be happening in the fall because uh, man, you talk about the pandemic and social distancing, like when you have to put force wind through an instrument. Um, so we're looking, we're going to get, uh, we're working on flex instrumentation. Um, I am blanking on the name. We just came up with the name of ourselves. It's like the composer. Do you know what I'm talking about? Like it's with um, Alex Shapiro and John Mackey and Steve. Oh, Hall. okay, okay, yeah. I, I I don't know the name, but the uh, but yeah. I, 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 <laughs> oh oh oh! It's the composer's repertoire initiative. Pretty sure that's it. So I wrote, we're trying to like brainstorm that. I recently wrote a piece for Flex Instrumentation. That's awesome. I right? uh, so I wrote it for um, four four parts. Um, and every single performer can play one of the four parts. And I was, awesome. it was kind of an NC inspired kind of piece yep. in terms of, I mean, it's pulse oriented, um, but it, um, there's four parts and the four parts are actually at four different levels. Um, Interesting. And the reason okay. why was because, and it's not like a matter of, hey, the best players are playing the first part and the, the worst players are playing the fourth part. It's not that. Every single part has something interesting that they're doing. The majority of the melody is actually in the fourth part, um, whereas cool. a lot of the more complicated rhythmic stuff is in the first part. Um, and the reason why, but like the the melodic stuff is actually a lot more. I wouldn't say drone, drony, but they're you know they're they're on the longer side. But when they come in, the 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 teacher was actually able to teach them uh, uh, certain you know. Uh, you know, being present and, and being all that. And, and and the reason why we wrote it this way, the, so this was actually a commission by, do you know Elena Specht? No, no, I don't. She's, so she's a composer, um, The and her husband's a band director. And now she's written for him a number of times, right? Um, but she, uh, you know, I think that he wanted to bring in another composer just because she can't write for him every time. Right. Well, sure. Yeah, and so we, um, so we were talking, and he was like, "Yeah, I really want to, want you to write a piece that could help some of the students that, uh, you know, we don't have a full band, we don't have bassoons or oboes or you know any of those, and we have like six trumpets and one saxophone and one yep. one trombone, and um, and I'm like, well, what if we just like let them all have access to the same part, and it's like an NC type of thing? And he's like, I like that idea. But the issue also is that they're not, they're kind of all at different levels. And they, and like some of the players are totally capable of playing like a grade four. Mm. And some of the players are like capable of a grade two. And this is what happens in a small program. Is uh, that you know what? Local bands. Just, just to plug, um, this is band directors, first of all, are saints. And they've been asking for flex instrumentation for years, for like decades. Like this is not an uncommon trope. Right. I would say that like, the silver lining of this is that now a lot of composers are aware that flex instrumentation is needed, especially this fall. But like this repertoire is gonna survive. It's gonna it's gonna keep going. And so um, I personally, I'm talking with my friends, like I want to eventually make all of my band stuff, past and future, um, flex instrumentation. Like, I, and there will be some pieces that I write that won't be able to be flex. Um, I kind of don't know if um, the piece I'm writing right now for uh, MSU will be flex, but I want to try. Okay, this pancake looks way better. Uh, really, like it really got golden brown and it yes. has like little crunk, crinkly edges and... Yes, I love it. I think that's what I love about this recipe. Like, I have to admit, um, when I lived in Columbus and I was not good at making any Korean food because again, I need like precision because I'm just, I'm not as creative in the kitchen as, as, as a composer, but, um, they started selling like frozen pachang and I got real excited. Oh my God. Well, I don't live next to Trader Joe's anymore, which is why I was like, I want pachang. Mm, you know, so, uh, but I like that ours have crinkly edges. They have crinkly terrible. edges, and they're so, they're beautiful crinkly edges. I agree. Yeah, you don't get those with the Trader Joe's version. Oh, no. well, because they're probably perfect looking. Yeah, 
I mean, and I think that this actually is perfect looking. Oh my god. Yeah. I am like these are turning out. I can't believe it. Everyone, third time's a charm. I would say uh, they're delicious no matter what. Oh yeah, they always taste good. They're they're delicious. Right. You just dip them in sauce and they're pancakes. Right. Oh, a pancake. Um, you all have all the ingredients. Like I said, you throw in some veggies. A regular onion, like why not? Who cares? Um, and uh, yeah, it took me three tries. And now they look good, but they'll still taste as good. Yeah, this is almost done. Okay, so this one's good. This almost looks like Europe. Okay. It's like this big splotch with- but Look at this. That is beautiful. Right, isn't it that great? That is beautiful. I'm very proud of this one. You should be. Um, I, I did want to ask um, a brief question about things that have recently arri arisen from a, you know, from a panel that you were on. Mm -hmm. um, can you tell us a little bit about that and 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 just the background? Yeah. So um, I had a bunch of conductor friends who um, just wanted to talk about some conversations that were pertinent to our field. Um, and the one that most recently participated was like the composer conductor collaboration. Um, and people on the panel were um, me, my friend uh, Caitlin Bove, Mary Kate McNally, Christian Michael Folk, uh, Cynthia Turner Johnson, and Alex Shapiro. And the topic was composer conductor collaboration. That's actually very important. Um, and we knew that uh, before going in, just because there was another panel that Alex Shapiro was on, that we were a mostly all white panel. Pardon me, you all I flip. Okay, woo, that got toasty. Okay, so um, we wanted to clarify that in the beginning. Um, our focus wasn't necessarily diversity, but all of us have worked with diversity in the past. Um, and because of our previous work and our continued work, we thought it would be important to like have a disclaimer that um, said, hi, we know that we're mostly white panel or perceived as like all of us pass as white. Um, but that being said, we're coming together to just figure out solutions. I will also say that we just decided to do this kind of unofficially. We weren't sponsored by any institution whatsoever. Um, we're just a group of friends and colleagues that, you know, wanted to talk about this to help out band directors, especially during COVID time. You know what I mean? So um, I remember Alice took an approach of like how to do like a commission contract. Um, I did mine on like how to get that dialogue started because money is kind of a thing right now, always is. Um, and so uh, I thought the panel went really well. I will also say that it is um, the second one. This is part of a two part series is on my YouTube channel. So y'all are welcome to watch it. I also did not record the beginning at first where we said we're mostly all white. Um, and then really quickly, it turned ugly because um, for some reason, Alex Shapiro just got attacked for being on two panels that week of uh, being all white or perceiving to be mostly white. Um, and she wasn't even the ones who put the panels together, which I thought was kind of ridiculous. Like why go after somebody who was not that? Um, and then it got really nasty because there are people that are like, you had an all white panel, blah, blah, blah. And um, as, as a side, I would say that I don't think the intention was to um, say we were representing everybody because that's literally impossible. I don't care if you had like different types of voices, um, you just can't, you can't ask a singular person or a singular group of people to represent everyone. But furthermore, it got a little hurtful because um, I felt like I was being whitewashed, like actually, um, because I pass as white. And so, um, I was like, it wasn't an all white panel, but there's some people that like really dug their feet in. And again, here's what I'm saying. I'm not saying that my, t my half Asian-ness is representative of Asians, is representative of disadvantaged people. Although like I have some experiences that I'd rather not recreate because they sucked and it had to do with my race. Um, so, uh, but there are these people who are like saying like, how dare you assume that this covers your bases? And I'm like, no, I'm like half, you know? And again, you can't say that a group of people covers all of your bases. And this is actually a problem in the band world and actually all of classical music is we don't have enough representation. We do not, we can do better. We can do so much better. Um, I think the fact of the matter is that we're trying. And so um, I thought like, 
I, I was like, I can just like not listen to these people who don't know who I am. And most importantly, who did not attend or see the panel, which is, again, you're dealing with people who have just not seen these facts. And um, I felt a bit hurt because it just reminded me of like, uh, you know, I have classmates, I think they were joking, like Asians joke in a very mean way, but like um, where they said, they would say things like, oh, I don't speak my native language, which is to me is English, or like they call me Wonder Bread, which is like, um, like a, very much like a high school level, like derogatory thing, you know, where it's like you, you're white or like, yeah, I don't know. Like, I, I know that I am who I am. I know how I identify. Um, I'm not going to go in my list of experiences to like prove anything, but it's just very hurtful because I think ultimately what was so hurtful about it was that people were purposely ignoring my voice and purposely ignoring what I was saying. Like to me, it was, it reeked more of misogyny, I think, than racism um, because the, like specifically a person was labeling me as a white woman who was just, you know, spewing yappy stuff out of my mouth. That's how I was feeling. So um, I feel better now, um, thanks, thanks for asking. Um, but like, I didn't think it would affect me that much and it shows that like erasure sucks. So um, that's what happened. Like I, I always feel a little um, protective when I hear people attacking my friends, right? In a way that is unjustified, um, but is also like complex. It's a complex situation. Yeah, absolutely. You, you can't, you can't like there's no possible way that you can have every single person from every single creed on a panel um, every single time. But also, I personally think it's irresponsible to make sure that you always ask um, specific people to be on these panels because they don't have time. You know, at the end of the day, uh, I I love Omar Thomas so much. By the way, Omar, if you I hope maybe you should watch this. Um, but like, I, I adore Omar so much, but he can't be on every single panel. Um, no, he can't. He's only one person and he, it's like that burden he, too. He's so busy. Yeah. And you know what, like our first panel, we had a woman of color, Tanya, um, who just got a new job at Penn State. So like, she couldn't be on our panel cause she's literally moving. Also like, she has a life. Do you know what I'm saying? Like also okay. we were doing this for free. Like, it's just. Yeah. We tried. Um, I think um, I think my friends would not be offended if I said we can do better. I think we can always do better. Well, That's probably like the half Korean in me too, where it's like I think we can always do better. Uh, but I thank you. Yeah, thank you for your thoughts. Um, and th actually, thanks for this opportunity to talk about it because, like, I think you know, I think everybody who comes from like. Uh, like a different background that's not cisgendered, white, straight male, like have these experiences and we don't get to see us talk about it. I'd even say like, this pertains to things like mental health. We're like, we're now slowly talking about it. It's just, it's so helpful. So um, thank you for just letting, for talking about this too, even though it was like not a great time. I was a little bummed for a couple of days admittedly, but like, I think it's important to talk about. So, so thanks for bringing this up. I think we should eat. Um, I think so too. All right. So, so here's have like a food shot, like of of. I think so. I'm gonna. Here, I'm gonna. I think it's still hot. Oh, you're doing this. You know, I'm gonna grab a smaller plate and get a little piece. Yeah, go ahead. I'm thrilled that we got to do this. I'm thrilled that our pancakes turned out really well. They, 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 not they, did. they really I'm, did. I'm going to. Okay, I'm putting and I'm using scissors because. Which is not cheating. Again, it's America. Oh, it's so good. No, it's so good. It's so good. I'm so, thank you so much for sharing this recipe. Oh, no problem. Um, okay, so while you're eating, because um, mm -hmm. that's that's how this show is always gonna be. Um, mm -hmm. So where can people find your stuff? Okay, so I have a website, www.jenniferjolly.com. The last name is spelled J-O-L-L-E-Y because um, I think my ancestors on my dad's side were very much British. Um, and you could follow me on Twitter at, at Jen Jolly with two N's, J-E-N-N-J-O-L-L-E-Y and Instagram Y Compose. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Um, 
all those links will be in the description below. Um, make sure that you go visit all of her things and like her stuff and subscribe to her, follow her, all the things. Um, also make sure that you like this video, subscribe to this channel. Let's, let's really build this up. Um, the more, uh, you know, the more people that can be on that, that, you know, watch the show means that more guests that I can get on the show and the more people that want to be excited about it. Um, so anyways, uh, have a great rest of your day and I hope you enjoy your pet dog. Well, I'm, my mouth will. Uh, yeah. I'll eat pancakes. Happy eating pancakes. Yep. There we go. There we go.